For some time, I have been staggered, absolutely staggered, that our nation's preeminent fund, the Future Fund, refused to back local venture capital. Um, it's not like they don't like venture capital, it's just they didn't like Australian venture capital. And we had been pressing them since last year to explain, out of the two billion that they put into venture capital, why is it they only invest one to two per cent here? Why is it the taxpayer dollars can be used to support the growth and evolution of new firms and new jobs offshore, but see none of that happen here? Now, in October, when the Future Fund was before estimates, they said that they didn't invest locally because they had doubts about the strength of the local VC um, community. And in fact, the quote from the head of the uh, Future Fund is, I think one of the things that's held the Australian venture capital industry back is that, frankly, performance hasn't been very good. And some in the VC community would probably agree with that. But things have changed. And what I found remarkable is that in October, before estimates, the head of the Future Fund can say that there are doubts about VC, but his own chief investment officer, just a month before speaking at the Financial Review's um, Innovation Summit, basically castigated everyone else for not backing local VC. In fact, he said it was time for a paradigm change, which is always a good way to get attention the minute you use that combination of words. To put all your retirement savings on a bet that robust economic growth and lower rates will continue is risky, said Dr Raphael Arndt at the, uh, at the summit, um, and then urging super funds to do more. Well, in actual fact, Host Plus, Australian Super, Hester, First State, all those pesky industry funds that the government likes to um, target um, and single out and chastise and harangue and put in all these new legislative arrangements and talk down, these funds have probably put more into local venture capital to back local firms and local jobs than what our own future fund has done. And yet we have, the, we have them hectoring um, super funds on one hand and then a month later, their own CEO is before estimates saying that local VC, there were big doubts about their performance. Now that was in October. And then suddenly in April, we open up the Sydney Morning Herald and John McDooling scored himself an exclusive. Blackbird Ventures, which is a great firm with a great investment portfolio, backed by a lot of great um, Australian tech entrepreneurs, has suddenly scored some money out of the Future Fund. And I absolutely congratulate the Future Fund for this. And they've, um, as it's been revealed in estimates, scored anywhere between 20 to $30 million to back locals. And that is good. But I, some things that came out of estimates were interesting. Two things in particular. One, the Future Fund has outsourced decisions about which local VCs they'll back to Greenspring Associates. And I don't have a problem with um, well and capable outfits making those decisions. They have to because of the quantum involved. But the thing I know moving in this environment for a number of years now is that VC tends to have a view and I've seen it, even when I travel in the States. VC would not only take a greater interest based on geographic proximity. That is, the closer your firm with the proposition wanting the money is to the location of the VC, they generally tend to back it that way. I don't know how many times Greenspring will be out to Australia and if they've set themselves up here to do the local scoping work of the local venture capital uh, market. But I have to say, this is something we will keep an eye on. Labor has been pressing the Future Fund to do more in this space, and if Greenspring only does an occasional visit to Australia that might occasionally lead to one article appearing in the Sydney Morning Herald about one VC that managed to score 20 to 30 million out of the fund, then there will be more questions asked by us. The second thing is, it's not very clear from the head of the Future Fund who appeared before estimates where they're going to go. For a group so fixed on stats, numbers and the concrete, they've not been forthcoming about how they'll move from the 1 to 2 per cent mark of current um, local investment from a 2 billion venture capital pool to something better. You'd expect better, um, and don't get me wrong, I think it's good what they're doing. We're certainly not advocating a mandate and forcing them to, and we certainly recognise you have to be very prudent about applying funds in this space because it's a high risk class. But the point is this. If the Future Fund has accepted the asset class, if the Future Fund has accepted investing $2 billion in venture capital, then clearly the appetite is there. 
And if they get similar return rates here to what they're getting overseas, it is absolutely incumbent on our nation's future fund to back local venture capital. This is me as a Labor MP arguing this. But a lot of us within our, our crew know this. You need to back new firms with new ideas to put new drive into an economy that hasn't behaved the same since the GFC. And we do need to be um, clear Labor will push for this because we see the longer term economic benefit. But if we see Green Spring only turn up once a year um, to scope out local VC and we only see one or two announcements just to keep um, the hounding off the backs of the future fund, this is not only something um, that is in the short term wrong but is denying us longer term economic prosperity and we will be fixed on this issue longer term.